What is going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'll be showing you what Trevor Jacob could have done after he's pulled his little stunt of an engine failure over the mountains in California, just uh, north of Santa Barbara. Uh, now, I know a lot of you would have probably seen this video already. I'm quite late to the party. I know that every man and dog has made a video about this already. Um, but nonetheless, it is a very interesting topic and I thought, you know what, since I can figure out the exact location of where this happened, and I think I can figure out pretty much, give or take, the exact altitude that it's happened at as well. Um, I thought I would uh, give it a shot and actually see what situation Trevor has found himself in and uh, whether or not he's made the right decision. Uh, and for those of you that have not been following along and do not know what I'm talking about, uh, Trevor Jacob is a YouTuber who's decided to fly his J3 Cub uh, very recently uh, over this very location. And uh, for whatever reason, he went flying with a proper skydiving parachute. And on top of that, for whatever reason, he seems to have had a fire extinguishers uh, hidden underneath his pants um, just in his legs and um, he's uh, he's also had a selfie stick he's decided that when his engine quit over here uh, for whatever reason there was a fuel line that was dangling around in the cockpit that you could see as well coming into the right wing uh, all very bizarre um, and then when his engine finally did quit uh, for whatever interesting reason, his door was already slightly propped open, almost as if he was wanting to jump out or getting ready to jump out. Uh, and then he wasted no time in thinking about any sort of landing zones or restarting the engine. He just bailed out and then uh, let his airplane crash, uh, saw where it crashed. In fact, I'll show you exactly where it crashed. Uh, if you can see my mouse right now, this area right here is the crash site. And uh, he's then decided to delay deploying his parachute uh, a point where he saw the airplane crash and then he's uh, glided down or, or flew down in his parachute and he's landed somewhere around right about there and then walked uh, to his crash site which is not too far away and it's kind of in the middle of this bush uh, and you can see that in his video uh, this is this is pretty much the exact location here now you see this mountain looks quite bold uh, in his video and in fact on Google Maps it is but because we're using Bing and Microsoft Maps uh, it's just not quite as good um, but just uh, but this is definitely 100% the right location um, and it's been deducted by their youtubers uh, and it is very obvious you'll see um, oh, the stream over here matches 100% everything everything is definitely the right place uh, in terms of altitude um, as you can see we are currently at 9800 feet and I believe this is pretty much correct and the reason for that is if you have a look at his video when his engine fails um, I'll just spin the airplane around here you can see there's a ridge running uh, so there's, there's this first ridge over here um, and then just beyond it is a second ridge and then beyond that is a third ridge you can see that when they align at this kind of angle this is when you can see them. I think this is give or take roughly um, his altitude. I think he was definitely not lower than 9,000 feet. Um, he was probably not higher than 10,000 as well because, well, he, he would have needed oxygen officially, I guess, um, or for any prolonged sort of period of time. Uh, but also, I mean, it is ridiculous that he's flying his little J3 Cub at this sort of height. I mean, look, this is ridiculous. The other interesting thing is his camera angles, they actually don't really show what's behind the airplane. I mean, he's all very concerned that he's over the mountains and he doesn't have any place to land, right, when he... When he jumps out with his parachute and the cameras are sort of showing that direction that direction I think maybe a little bit of that direction but hey look behind you oh look at that um, so many plateaus and fields and all sorts of stuff in that direction uh, which just he just doesn't show in in his angles well let's have a look underneath <laughs> I mean there is there's a there's a stream running there so we'll, we'll be talking about that once we're playing the scenario out and we actually fail the engine and see what see what we can do but that that is kind of a, like a really obvious one straight away I mean there is straight away this thing um, well n this is not a Piper Cup by the way just for reference this is as Lynn from Microsoft Flight Simulator and um, it, it'll be similar enough for me to demonstrate what situation Trevor has found himself in and um, the performance won't be exact um, I think the J3 Cup will stall a little bit slower and fly a little bit slower but it's give or take similar sort of uh, airplane performance wise so uh, just bear that in mind given the type of airplane he was flying and where he was I believe he should have glided down um, so let's just assume that um, he did or assume that he didn't wear a skydiving parachute that day for whatever reason and uh, uh, he had to land, so let's see how that would have panned out. We have two better inside. You're clear to disconnect the headset. We'll see you on the left with the pin. Thanks a lot. Caught in the 
All right, folks, so here we are. Uh, this is pretty much his precise location. Uh, let's um, let's quit the engine, uh, and then we'll just talk about straight away what we do. Uh, first thing, well, first thing is you want to pitch up to your uh, optimal glide speed. So, uh, in other words, this, the speed for which will gain you maximum distance in a glide. Now, let's just pretend in this airplane it's about 80 knots. It'll be there, give or take. I'm, I don't know exactly what this is in the in the uh, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now at this point, um, straight away, you know, you'd be having a look around because you've got loads of time, right? I mean, you've got loads of time and let's just say, you know, it happened unexpectedly and you, you don't know what's going on, right? So straight away, I'm, I'm looking uh, straight off the nose, big mountains, don't want to go there, I don't see any fields. Yeah, it's not looking great that way. Oh, but what, what is this? This is a very obvious stream river uh, running down uh, through the valley here uh, with lots of sort of plateaus and uh, looks like fairly flat areas and, and here's the other thing right I mean look if we turn around and we head back that way we could always just see what our glide is looking like now you see there's there's a ridge ahead of us there right now that ridge I agree just just passing underneath the nose you know if you weren't sure you're gonna make it beyond it you you know, you could get yourself into a little bit of trouble because uh, then you're really stuck in the mountains, right? And then you've got no way of coming back. So uh, let's just say we're looking around. Let's look around here. Now, this is his actual crash site that I'm looking at. That's that's where the airplanes went and crashed into uh, that uh, shadowy part of the mountain there. Um, so, I mean, at this point, I think making the ridge, making, will we make it over the ridge? Yeah, I'd say we could make it over the ridge, but do we want to make it over the ridge all the way out there and, you know, risk getting pretty close to it? Nah, I mean, I think maybe probably not, but look, if we look underneath, uh, there is some nice areas where that stream is running, looks like uh, some, like, gravel bars and all sorts. In fact, there's, there's loads of places there absolutely loads so at this point you know you probably could now we're just having one more look you know look, look how much time we have we got loads of time I mean we're losing about what are we descending about 700 feet per minute probably averaging and um, you know we're at 8,000 feet and we, we got we got 10 minutes of flight time okay let's say the mountains are quite high let's we'll call it five minutes easy um, so straight away I'm thinking okay this stream below me is just looking ideal it's got loads of places right I mean especially if an airplane can land at you know 50 miles an hour I mean it doesn't need much distance to stop and even if you like I say even if you topple over the, the, you know scrape the prop and that kind of thing it, it's still it's still really not a big issue. Um, now, the other thing, obviously, is you, you'd probably be trying to start the engine. Once you pick a landing site, you can kind of go, right, okay, well, that stream down there is lots of places. I can uh, I can glide down to it, right? Let's let's see if we can restart the engine. Haven't seen him do that in the video at all. Uh, don't know why he hasn't even considered restarting the engine. Um, and it's not like his engine is seized, because it was very obvious that he was pulling back to stall speed to basically something like where the because you see at the moment the propeller is windmilling um, and he tried to make sure that his propeller wasn't windmilling and it just stopped as if it seized but it, it didn't seize it was pretty obvious um, so anyway at this point we are looking and in fact I can see a nice big sort of like I don't know I guess it looks like a little beach or gravel bar or something in that stream uh, just where that apiler is now just behind it just right there so I'm thinking I'm thinking that's a really good spot so let's just say we've tried to restart the engine and it just wasn't happening it just didn't work so straight away I'm thinking okay that is the spot I'm gonna go for and in the meantime it's still we got loads of time right to get there and in the meantime we're still looking around because you never know there might be some place uh, that is just because not everywhere here is like full of bush you know it's um, there's some there's some fairly uh, kind of baldy looking mountains and obviously you don't want to land on a slope if you can avoid it um, but there might be a little sort of flat area on top of a mountain somewhere uh, I don't see it so yeah I think we're gonna be committed to the stream behind us and uh, it's always worth having a look so there the, the place I'm looking at right there just on top of the uh, throttle uh, that is just looking absolutely perfection uh, what I want to have a think about is maybe which side I'll come in from I want to come into a headwind if I can figure out where that is what what that is now obviously at this point it might be really difficult because you don't have 
you don't really see how the trees are moving. Um, you don't see, there's no like windsock or anything like that. Um, so at this point, I'm not really bothered about my best glide. If I know the place I'm going to, you know, I can I can almost speed it up. But can I have a look around just to see? So there's there's some more areas there. In fact, I can see one. I can see one back there as well, just where the wing strut is. I mean, that seems like kind of nice as well. But it's not running quite as perpendicular. Sorry, quite as parallel to the river. So I don't know if it would be quite as good. And it looks a little bit more brownie. This 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 place right here looks really nice. Um, so let's just get a little bit closer. Uh, and in fact, I can see, I think I could see maybe a house down there as well. So that could be perfect. Um, you know, get help straight away, basically. No need to walk all the way from back there. Um, so yeah, the main thing to emphasize is he had loads of time. Like, he had, he had heaps and heaps of time to think about stuff. So... Um, all right, I think I think I know what I'm gonna do. I think I know that the exact place I'm gonna land. It's right there. Is there anything else around here? Well, there is sort of grass, grassy hillside, but it's not it's not really ideal. Um, you could also, if you wanted to, let's say as a plan B, have a think about what's behind that mountain, just where the A pillar is. Um, just uh, pitch back to your best glide speed. Let's call it about 80 knots and uh, see if you can extend it a little bit just to see if there's something behind it that might be worth gliding to but at this point I think this right here is just looking too good too good to pass up um, once again nothing around and at this point you know we might want to secure the airplane in various ways uh, we might want to open up the door a little bit in case we do crash land uh, and you know we're on the ground and you know we want to get out easily and that kind of thing we can think about preparing the airplane making sure there is no fuel to the engine and all that kind of thing um, anyway yeah there's definitely a house right there I mean that is perfect so at this point yeah I'd say we're committed and again there's plenty of these places all the way down that stream look I mean there's just tons and heaps and heaps of places now I know what you're gonna say you're gonna say oh yeah but command this is a flight simulator it's not real life you don't know if it's actually gonna be that good a landing place yeah I mean look the the reality is of course me sitting in my armchair coming in for a nice glide approach here um, is not like real life you being in the middle of the mountains right but the weather was nice visibility was nice he did have this riverbed um, to, to consider all the way and it was loads of landing space um, and like you know you, you there's no quite even if you had to touch down on the actual river itself I mean that would still you know potentially save the airplane um, and he would be okay as well uh, so anyway, let's just concentrate on the landing. Uh, now remember, you can use flaps in this one because it is manual flaps. You can always retract them if you don't need to. Uh, we've actually, I think we've actually oversped the flaps there, so that was me not paying attention there. It was beyond the white bar. Um, right, get the final stage of flaps out. And yeah, um, if you need to kill a bit more height, you can always sidestep it. So just go like that, you know. If you bears for all I know but the end of the day is it was totally doable there is no question about it it was totally even if even if he bend the prop and he bend the wings or he bend the landing gear whatever um, at the end of the day nobody in the ground could have possibly got hurt because he was in total control of the airplane all the way down um, and he himself um, should have walked away from something like this without any issues 
Um, so anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this little video, and uh, if you have, please make sure to smash the living daylight out of the like button, subscribe for future videos, and hopefully I'll catch you in the next one. Adios.